All right, aloha, and welcome to my talk on making and breaking Mac firewalls. Uh, my name is Patrick. I work at Digita Security, where we are creating cybersecurity tools for the Mac enterprise. I'm also the creator of the Mac security website, Objective C. So today we're going to talk about creating or making a firewall for Mac OS. We're then going to shift gears. We're going to put on our hacker hats and talk about then breaking or bypassing such products. So about a year ago I decided, hey, I want to write a firewall for Mac OS. So this section of the talk will describe that process in creating a free Mac firewall product called Lulu. So there's many reasons you might want to create or install a firewall. Some of the obvious ones are obviously to help protect your privacy. Uh, firewalls are also good at thwarting cyber attacks. Uh, many firewalls are able to generically detect malware that perhaps has gotten onto your system and now is trying to beacon out perhaps to talk to a command and control server. So what our firewall will do is monitor all network traffic and allow trusted traffic while detecting and blocking malicious or unauthorized traffic. Now, since we need to monitor all network connections, we are going to have to write a kernel extension. Luckily in Mac OS, Apple pr provides something called network kernel extensions or NKEs, and they provide a way to modify or extend the network infrastructure. One type of NKE is called a socket filter, filter, which as its name obviously implies, can filter network traffic at the socket level, which for creating a firewall sounds perfect. So in order to filter network traffic and connections, uh, we first have to register a socket filter. So you accomplish this by first filling out a socket filter structure. And this structure has various callbacks, which once registered will be invoked by the operating system any time a socket action occurs. This then gives our firewall the ability to monitor, examine, and filter these socket actions. Now once this uh, socket filter structure has been populated, you invoke the socket filter register function. And this will, as its name implies, register or install the socket filter. Now besides that po populated structure, structure we just discussed, this filter also takes the socket domain, type, and the protocol. So this means if you want to uh, filter mul multiple socket types, for example, IPv4, IPv6, et cetera, et cetera, you have to invoke this function multiple times. All right, so now let's talk about these callbacks, which, as I mentioned, once your socket filter is installed, the operating system will automatically invoke when socket actions occur, allowing your firewall to examine and either allow or block these events. So first up, we have the attach callback. As the slide mentioned, this is called any time a socket is created. And it's called with the actual socket and also a cookie parameter which can hold any socket-specific data. So here we allocate a chunk of memory and then we store an action based on the PID of the process. If it's a process we're going to allow, we set it to allow. If it's a process we want to block, we set the action to block. And if it's a new process or something that we don't recognize, we set the action to ask. Next up is the connect out callback. And this will be called by the operating system anytime a socket attempts to initiate an outgoing connection. It takes that same cookie parameter, which we've set to either allow, block, or ask, the socket, and then the remote address that the socket is trying to connect to so we can examine the endpoint. Now, if we've previously set the action to allow, we just return OK from this function. This tells the operating system we're cool with this and it should be allowed. If we want to block this, we just return an error from this callback, and this will tell the operating system to block or deny the connection. Now, if the cookie has been set to ask, this means we, we're not sure what to do. You know, should we allow the process? Should we block it? We're just not sure. So we have to have some extra logic. So if we don't know what we should do, we're going to have to ask some other firewall components. So the first thing we do is, still in the kernel, we set the thread to sleep, basically pausing the operation. We then ask our user mode firewall component, daemon for assistance. And we pass the information that we have from the kernel to user mode via a shared queue. For example, the PID and the socket that's trying to initiate the outgoing connection. 
So the daemon now gets this request from the kernel, and what it does is it maps a PID to a path, and then first checks if this path exists in the rules database. If it's not found, meaning it's, it's a brand new application or a piece of malware that's never been on the system before, what it then does is it sends another message to another firewall component that's running in the user's UI session, which will now actually display the firewall alert to the user. So the user now is, has to basically answer uh, the question, should they allow this connection? And what we do is we wait until they interact with this alert. Once they've clicked either allow or block, this response is first sent back to the daemon. The daemon then updates the rule database and then propagates this response back into the kernel via an IO kit interface. The kernel extension wakes up the thread that it had previously put asleep and then applies the action that the user specified, either allowing or blocking the connection. So basically that, at least from a conceptual point of view, is all the pieces we need to build a comprehensive kernel level firewall for Mac OS. So we put this all together, we have Lulu. So I mentioned Lulu is a free firewall for Mac OS. Uh, the entire source code 